our next part of the discussion, which is the book uh, published by the New York Academy of Sciences, and I understand that was in December of 2009, entitled Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for People and the Environment, and it's by three authors, Alexei uh, Yablokov, uh, Vasily Nestorinko, and his son Alexei. Nestorinko, and on here prominently uh, listed as the consulting editor is Janet D. Sherman Nevinger, and that's you. Right. Um, this is a, a major publication, and I would like to get um, an in-depth understanding from you how this book was written, and how did you become involved in editing this book? Well, there was a great deal of effort in regard to this book. Now, the Nest, uh, Alexei Yablokov, who was um, who is a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, and and and, and when um, uh, Kennedy was president, he was a advisor to Gorbachev. Okay. And he has continued research uh, over these many decades. Now he and the Nestorenkos published this. His book. research was on Chernobyl. Oh yes. Okay. Well, no, his research has been on on um, sea animals and other uh, ex I results of nuclear radiation. I see. Okay. Before Chernobyl and after Chernobyl. Okay, but he's an expert on that. That's yeah. what he oh, has yes. been looking at. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now they published a book on Chernobyl. Um, they meaning Yablokov uh, and Nesterenko? Right. Okay. In Russian. Okay. In um, two thousand and seven. Okay. And I meet with, uh, I had met Alexei through a colleague who said, you must meet this man. So every time he comes to the United States, he and I get together. And when he, after he wrote this book in Russian, they wrote this book in Russian, he brought me a copy, which of course I don't read Russian. Okay. And he said, we need to get this out in English, but we have no money and we need an editor. And he looked at me. Now, how did, how did he know you? Well, we have been in touch for a number of years. I was, uh, he spoke in New York and a colleague of mine said, you must go meet this man. You must hear what he has to say. So I w did go to when he came to Washington, went to hear what he had to say. Okay. And we uh, stayed in touch over the years. Okay. And then when he looked at me and said, we have no money, but we need to get this book out, I kind of foolishly said, <laughs> I'll be glad to edit it, real, thinking that it would take me maybe six months or so. But it took 14 months to edit this book, which was a massive job. My gosh, 14 months? Yeah. And he used a um, computer program to translate from Russian to English. Okay. And I got some of the most scrambled sentences you ever saw in I your see. entire life. Things like, having been in your country long distance, I'm liking it much. You didn't same. edit the science. No, you didn't have anything to do with that. The science and the medicine was exactly the same. Now, what is the science here? What, what are we talking about? What compiles this book? Well, they, uh, well over 30,000 articles have been published about Chernobyl, mostly in uh, Russian, uh, in Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. They abstracted well over 5,000 articles. Now, let me ask you about that. When you say articles, I, I, I don't want to confuse this with journalism. In other words, this isn't somebody just no. writing a story, these articles. These are what? I call these boots on the ground. I hate that term. Okay. But these were um, um, physicians, okay. veterinarians, scientists, um, direct academia. observers. Direct People observers. Who were there. Okay, got and you. And saw what was going on with the animals, with the people, with the birds, with the fish. Okay. Who actually were there. All right. And publishing is very difficult. Most of these, not all, but mo uh, much of this was published uh, in Russian. Okay. And now, now they've translated. And they these authors took. They analyzed these these. Yes. Journals. They abstracted all of these. I see, and this is and 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 this is and, and these journals contain statistical evidence that, that was gathered from people on site after the Chernobyl accident. Right. And okay. Not by just one person or two people okay. or three people. It was collected. So this is massive. It's a massive collection of data on humans, on fish, on birds, on mushrooms, 
by multiple observers who were there at the time. Now, not only that, when I, when I look at the inner contents of this book, there are extensive maps oh, yes. showing the, the uh, direction that the radiation contaminants were traveling in. Yes. Data collected by Canada, the United States, Finland, uh, Ukraine, where, from all around the world, yes. Okay. Now, we've got a large body of information here. You've been asked to edit this book. Um, the authors are financially strapped as far as being able to carry this forward into um, publishing it into the English language. Well, it's worse than that. Uh, Vasily Nestorenko died in August of 08. Oh, you're kidding me. During the... During the Before this got published. Oh, my gosh. He, he died, so there's just Alexei Yablokov and, 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 and the Alexei uh, Nestorenko. The son. Yes. The son. Now, how, how did this book ultimately get published? Who took this on, and how, how did this happen? Well, largely happened as a result of um, Tim, uh, Professor Tim Mousseau, whose photograph is on the cover of the book. Oh, this is the photograph of the, uh, the logs, logs, the trees. Which shows the trees before and after Chernobyl. Right. So what, what we have here is, is we have a log that, that, that was cut right. before the accident happened at Chernobyl, and then logs that no, were... No, no, these are logs that have been cut recently. I and see. And it shows the rings... The, the, oh, that, I see what you're saying. The rings show the effects of radiation. I see. Now, Tim Mousseau is dean and head of the sci uh, biology department at the University of South Carolina. Okay. And he was able to get the book uh, to a, an editor at the New York Academy of Sciences, and they signed a contract with the Yablokov and the Nestorenkos. Okay. And then after, and then I was asked, well, during this process, I was asked to uh, be the editor. Okay, now this, this is an important body of work, correct? You, you don't take oh, any incredible, exception. It's incredible. It's incredible. Okay, right, okay. Yeah. How many books were published? 700. Why is that? Why, why did the New York Academy of Sciences only publish 700 copies? I think they may have gotten pressure from the nuclear industry and didn't want to uh, publish more. I think it's kind of sad. You don't know. You, you don't ultimately, know. you don't know. I but don't you're, know. you're right. I, I got you. But it is now available on the, the Internet. And that's, uh, the New York Academy of Sciences is now making that available. Right. You can go to their website. And by the way, we will put that up, how you can get to the website. Um, you can get a PDF copy of this book, and, it, and b the thing, my, my history in this was, is that I, w in fact, I was telling you that, that I saw this um, article on Common Dreams about this book, and I immediately um, went to Amazon, because I bought books from Amazon, and I, and I put the name of this book in there, and lo and behold, the book was $150. They, pu they, they priced it at $150, which is way out of range of most... It's shocking. I mean, I, I was Both shocked. Both people are, are groups. And then I went to the New York Academy of Sciences website, and it was $150. And, and then they said there was a price bake if you weren't a member, uh, or if you were a member, and I'm not a member. So I could, and then they didn't tell you what the price bake was, but I knew that there was, there, there, at least there was a way to get it at a, at a reduced rate. The, the, the other thing that concerns me about this book is that, um, when I read the book and I get to the end of the book, we're missing something. Where's the index? <laughs> There's no index included in the book. But why? It's available. I do have a copy which I can share with you. But yeah. why? Why? Why is the index missing? Why? You? I'm not, I don't think I've ever read a research study or a book that c compiled research studies. Yeah, I think it's a serious. It's a serious oversight. Yes. I see. Or serious omission. And, and if I go to the New York Academy of Sciences, which I did, the website, to take a look at the free copy of the PDF that they have on there, I notice there's no there's still index. There's no index. Still no. I, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked. I'll send you a copy. Should we leave it there, I suppose? Yes. All right, okay. The, uh, the next question that I want to ask you about, of course, is, is uh, you know, what are the major impacts of the Chernobyl accident? What, what are we talking about here? Well, not every system was studied. But every system that was studied, whether it's humans, or birds, or fish, or fungi, bacteria, viruses, trees, berries, um, 
wild animals, domestic animals were changed without exception. There was alterations either in the biology of the animals, in their DNA, okay. in, uh, they produce birth defects. So now we're talking birth defects, all right. Uh, but not just in humans, but we're right. talking about plants and board. birds. Yeah, across the you. board. There were adverse effects in every system that was studied. What about, what about deaths? Did people die from the accident in Chernobyl? Yes. And, and what, would, what, what does this book say are the number of people that were ultimately impacted well, taking or killed into by this accident? Multiple uh, studies done by many different people. Right. The estimate is that worldwide that there were eight, over 800,000 excess deaths. Excess deaths. So we're, we're almost looking at a million people. Almost it, a million people. Wow. Now that was as of uh, 2004. Now, one of the things that, that I find troubling, and, and I to, as I told you before, when I um, became uh, aware of this book, I had been debating a, a nuclear physicist by the name of uh, Dwayne Ray, and who had been referencing studies that were done on Chernobyl, uh, one of which um, is uh, often cited, and we will actually talk about that ag again when we talk about another book that you didn't write, um, uh, done by the World Health Organization, which apparently shows a very minimal number of people that actually died from Chernobyl and very few impacts upon the environment, you know, the, the fish, the you know, the other animals that, are, that were exposed. Now, how do we get this analysis and in comparison to the one that was done here? What's, what's, what's lacking? First of all, the World Health Organization is the United Nations Organization. Right. I, shouldn't I have confidence in that? I mean... Well, unfortunately, in 1958, the World Health Organization and the IEA, IEAE, International Agency for Atomic Energy, had a pact. Okay, now let, let, before we, because yeah, a lot of people probably don't know about this, so we've got the World Health Organization. That's a separate organization responsible for analyzing health data in the in the world in, in, in a variety of ways. Right. Then we've got this International Atomic Energy Agency, right? The IEA, whatever. Um, IEAE. And, IEAE. And what are they responsible for doing? They're for responsible for promoting nuclear energy. Well, so what do they have to do with each other? Why, why, why do you bring that up? Where, where is the connection here? Your question is, what's the WHO and the IEAE? Well, they, no, we know what they are. You've yeah. described that. My, my question is, is, what's the connection? Well, they, why, why, what does the IEA, have, it, which is a promoter of nuclear power, have to do with an organization that does health analysis? Well, they have a pact that goes back to 1958. This is a written? Yes. A written pact, okay. Under the United Nations. All right, explain this. Neither one will provide, will, will produce data or information that is not cleared by the other one first. Okay, so are you saying that when the World Health Organization did their analysis. They had to clear that analysis with the International Atomic Energy Agency before it was published. Right, before. It's like, it's like Dracula guarding the blood bank. I'm amazed. I am, I'm absolutely amazed. Now, did the World Health Organization consider the information that was gathered by um, Dr. Dr. Yablokov and the Nestorinkos. No, they published this beforehand, and it was in, published in 2000. 2006, wasn't it? Right, and they only cited about 350 articles, mostly in the English language. So a very smaller database. It's, oh, it's, much, much, much smaller. I see, okay. And none of it from the, uh, the Russian language. So... One of the reasons why we have this confusing debate about the health effects of nuclear power is, is we have these kind of conflicting studies, and really the only way for someone that's a layperson or a member of the public to sort through it, I guess, is to look at where it's coming from, uh, and also what relationships it has with the nuclear industry, and then at the same time review what the, the content of the book is, I mean, it, to, as much as you can. Well, yes, and because this is a tremendous, wide-ranging uh, coverage of the whole Chernobyl issue. 
Let me ask you something else. Um, you know, most th this accident occurred, if my memory is correct, it was in October of 86? April. April of 86. April okay, so of I'm off on the month. I'm off, yeah. I'm off on the month. Now, this was quite a while ago. 25 years this coming year. Is this accident over? No. So how is the accident continuing? Well, uh, the radiation contamination is still present. Um, I re there was recently a, a thing on the Internet showing that somebody had shot a wild boar and they tested for the radiation. It was so high that they, the meat was, con was uh, confiscated. I have a colleague who was recently in Chernobyl, and she said when she came back that the so-called containment that's over the top of the uh, reactor is now generating its own weather inside because the the, the reactor the containment the, the containment structure is generating its, its own weather well, it's inside or outside inside inside it's, okay it's, it's condensing water okay that would that would and strangely enough water flows downhill of course it's seeping into the what's remaining in the reactor okay and it's going out into the uh, the groundwater I see okay now there's this grand and glorious plan to put a a new so, cap, right? It's called sarcophagus. Right. Over the top of the the reactor. Right. Now, what they plan to do is to, two clamshells to come together like this over the top of the reactor. Okay. The problem is, how do you move these massive things on tracks, and how do you build the tracks, the railroad tracks, to get it there? Lord. And what about the workers who are working next to the reactor that is still hot? Right. And then once you get it in place, who's going to work over the top to weld it? You know, the World Health Organization, I believe, concluded there were like well, only, what, 56 workers that died? No, it was far more than that. Again. So, again, we have great discrepancy here. The workers who were sent in were conscripts, a lot of military. They were young men and women. They were able-bodied young men and women. All right. And close to 900,000 actually went in there. 900,000? Yes, from wow. all over. I mean, we're Lithuania, Latvia. No kidding, over time. Over, over the period of time okay. to try and contain this. Some of them would be sent in for like a half an hour because they get their maximum amount of exposure. Okay. They hired uh, uh, miners to dig underneath the... Uh, reactor, reactor vessel. Right. right. Now, can you imagine how dangerous that was? Of course. And you had you had radiation going into the ground. Of course. Right. And then, of as of um, 2006, I think that's the year, 275,000 liquidators have already died. That's what they called them, liquidators. They call liquidators. Oh these my God. They, and these, mind you, were young men and women. 275,000. Because they, you had to be healthy to be to go work on it. Now, not only did you have all the problems with these people getting sick, but they, they had, they, these were people of childbearing age. And a lot of the children were born with serious medical problems, not just birth defects, but... And here's where know, the on-ground evidence comes from again. Yes, these right, are right. the people who were... And there's, pitch, there's actual photographs of children in yes. here, right, who have yes. been affected right. by it. There's pictures of birds and trees that have been affected. I ask this question because I'm going to bring it up again when we talk about another perspective on nuclear power, but do you believe that this book represents a rigorous scientific analysis of the radiation health effects that have been caused by Chernobyl? I believe it does because it takes into account multiple uh, observers, multiple publications, uh, and of multiple systems. I mean, it's not just humans. It's not just trees. It's multiple. Multiple. multiple when you say system, si you're talking about biological systems. Biological system, systems. From fish, right. to, from fish to man. I got you. Okay. The, at the very end of this book, I, and I have not read every chapter in this book, but I have made an effort to read a number of the chapters in this mm -hmm. book. And I went and looked at the uh, last chapter of this book. And again, a lot of this you advised me on, too. You had, you had indicated there were various things I wanted to look at here. The, at the very end of this book, the authors conclude, and I want to I read this quote. The, the Chernobyl catastrophe demonstrates that the nuclear industry's willingness to risk the health of humanity and our environment 
with nuclear power plants will result not only theoretically, but practically in the same level of hazard as nuclear weapons. Now that, that amazes me. I mean, nuclear weapons, uh, um, not only the ones that were actually exploded during World War II, but also the above ground testing that took place by both the Russians and the, uh, the uh, Americans for, and, the and the French, that's right, and the British, everybody was putting one off. Um, released a tremendous amount of radiation into the environment. And yet, the authors of this book believe, from this statement, that we're looking at what may be a, a level of hazard equal to what was created uh, by that. Do you agree with that? Okay, well, the issue of Chernobyl is that it's ongoing. And one of the uh, things that is happening is plutonium-141 is decaying into americium-141. Now, this sounds very esoteric and all. No, that's all right. Now, go into this, because this but is important. This is, this is a water-soluble chemical. Americium? Americium is water-soluble, so it's being taken up by plants. Okay. And what happens is that the Amaris, it, it rains and snows. Now, now, when we talk about this plutonium, one of the things when I look at the maps, this is, this, these are radioactive isotopes that dusted the whole northern hemisphere. That's Am I right. correct? Right. Okay, so we're even talking about the United States of America having this particular right. problem. Absolutely. All right. Continue, please. So the plutonium um, decays into americium. Americium is very water soluble. Okay. What happens is when it rains and snows, it goes into the groundwater. Plants pick this up and it, it goes about two to four centimeters deeper every year as you know as things have to sink. Right. Picked up by trees and plants, which are then eaten by humans. Okay. And they then take these into their bodies. Now how does the body see americium? That, that it's water soluble, so it goes throughout the body. Really? Yeah. Okay. And All it's right. an alpha emitter. So what happens with an alpha emitter is it it's, it does not penetrate your skin. It no. will not penetrate a piece Pace of paper. It's a paper, right? But once it's taken into your body, an alpha is one of those forms of radiation that's emitted. Right. Right. That that adversely affects the cells around it. It gotcha. doesn't go very far, but it causes radiation. Because damage. the tissue is sensitive. Well, yeah, and it's, and a powerful, it's a powerful alpha radiator. Right. Now, what happens is when, in the fall, when the leaves fall off the trees, All right. then the, in snows and rains, and it takes the americium, which is in the leaves, Washes them out of the leaves back into the ground again. So you get a cycling of this. So you're, you're exposed over and over again. Over and over and over. And we're caught... How long are we talking about here? Oh, centuries. You're kidding. No. So we're talking about several hundred years more of Chernobyl. Oh, at least. At least. Oh, my God. Now, if you recently followed the news, that, excuse me, forest fires in Russia last R summer. Right. Now, all these areas that were contaminated with radioisotopes, where there's forest fires, mm -hmm. it puts that into the smoke, and the smoke travels... Distributes again, right. Again. All right. So we're talking about an ongoing site of contamination that will be uh, emitting radioisotopes for centuries. You know, one of the arguments that um, I come up against a lot is, well... That was Chernobyl. That was that Russian reactor design. Well, they didn't even have a containment structure. Um, you know, how does this translate into the American nuclear industry, which, you know, has, a, you know, the three-foot-thick concrete walls and the, you know, six inches of steel liner and, and all this kind of stuff? We don't have to worry about um, Chernobyl happening in the United States. How would you respond to that? Yes, we do. The reactor that's down on Lake Erie, I'm trying to remember the name of it right now, uh, had a problem where it eroded within one inch of the... The B David Bessie plant. David Bessie plant. Right, right. David, and that came within an inch of, of losing the containment vessel. So, so even, with the, even with these other reactor designs, we still can face... And not only that, I would, I would assume you would agree that um, you could have terrorist activity. Uh, in fact... The, uh, the, the people that committed 9-11 had actually um, considered driving one of those planes into Indian Point. 
which would have, you know, absolutely ruined New York's New York's state. Right. In fact, we probably wouldn't even need to have this discussion because at that point we'd have our own little backyard Chernobyl. Chernobyl. But you not only have terrorists, you have stupidity. Right, and we have lots of that. <laughs> I, I, it's amazing. I mean, you have people who are falling asleep on the job. Right. You have people uh, who are not well trained. Right. And you have people who really don't understand the how serious their job may be of running a nuclear power right. plant. Well, I, you know, I appreciate the fact that we've talked about this. I want to emphasize once more that this book is now available, and I, you, I think, are very instrumental in this happening. Um, it's now available for free in PDF file, copy, um, at the New York Academy of Sciences website, which you will see on the screen here. I invite you to go to the website. Don't be intimidated by the website. When I've gone there, by the way, the, the way I went about doing it was uh, in attempting to to use all the ignorance that I could come up with, you come, you come to the website and I just entered Chernobyl into the search engine that they have on there. That took me to a, a list of results and the top one of course is the book. I click on that, that takes me to a photograph of the book. When I look at the photograph of the book, um, there's a, there's a, buy it, there's a, of course the thing buy it and then I think uh, you can get what's called the full text and I clicked on the full text and that takes me to where there's this, um, um, what it seems to be non-members view annuals TOCs free. I don't know what that means, but I clicked on that and at that point it showed all the PDF files. So again, if you're interested in uh, getting this book, and I highly recommend that you do, you can download it chapter by chapter and it will be there.